German Catholic bishops defy Vatican and back blessings of same-sex relationships. A majority of bishop delegates at the Synodal Path in Frankfurt, Germany, voted in favor of same-sex couples being able to have their relationships blessed by the German Catholic Church beginning in 2026. The group is overseen by the Synodal Assembly, a 230-member high-level conference organized by Germany's Catholic Church to address potential reforms in the Church's teachings and practices. The document, entitled Blessing Ceremonies for Couples Who Love Each Other, was passed 176 to 14. The document's motion called on the group to officially allow blessing ceremonies in their diocese for couples who love each other, but for whom sacramental marriage is not accessible, including those who do not see themselves getting married or who have been divorced. The motion explicitly states it includes same-sex couples based on a reevaluation of homosexuality as a part of human sexuality. It states that refusing to bless couples who live their lives in love, commitment, and responsibility to each other and God would be merciless and discriminatory. Wow, this, when I saw this story come across my desk, I was absolutely floored. I mean, Pope Francis is one of the most liberal popes we've ever had, especially by, you know, Pope standards, <laughs> papal standards. Yes, I know the word. Um, but the fact that it's... And this is this is so 20th century, but the fact that it's Germans that are doing it kind of really caught me as well. I think this is a wonderful thing, and, we'll, and we're going to have to see how the Pope will handle it. And of course, 2026 is still a long way away, and um, there could be a new Pope by then, whether he retires or whether Francis passes away. So there's a lot to watch on this, but it's a very encouraging step coming from the heart of um, of of Europe. <laughs> what I thought of was, you know, I remember. Uh, let's see, in 1983, the word homosexual didn't, didn't exist in the Bible, mm -hmm. in German. In 1983, there was a misprint, right? And the word first appeared in the German Bible, homosexual, first appeared in 1983. This is not like something that's been part of the church. And it was a misprint. And they said, we already printed all the Bibles. We can't afford to reprint them. Just leave the word in there, like it's not that big of a deal. It's turned into a really big deal, right? So I'm kind of not surprised that Germany, who's all, ha already had to like look at their history with Nazism and had to, you know, relearn and, and uh, retrain themselves. I'm not surprised that they're the first to go, you know, we have to stop this charade. Well, we wait, made wait. a mistake. We should have never done it. It's hurting a lot of people. We need to fix this and move on. Was it a mistake you know? or was it an act of God? <laughs> you know, not to poke fun at people, but I mean, poke fun at people. Uh, a lot of a lot of Christians don't really care about the uh, history of the Bible, sadly, right. um, and Catholics as well. Um, as as Paul mentioned, the original words used had more to do with pedophilia than homosexuality. Yeah. Yeah. It it wasn't meant to be about homosexuals. As a matter of fact. Um, when Jesus blessed the centurion and healed uh, the centurion's servant, the words used in the original translations of the Bible indicated that that servant was a same-sex bound concubine, like a romantic love slave. Um, so the Bible has support of homosexuality in it, classically, that people tend to either ignore or reinterpret the way that uh, is beneficial to their point of view. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was raised Roman Catholic. You were. I was. My apologies. Hmm. So you're recovering. And <laughs> I, with a full acknowledgement of my hashtags are bitter and party of one, <laughs> too little too late. Mm -hmm. Because the Roman Catholic Church is years behind a whole bunch of mainline Protestant mm -hmm. churches like the Episcopal Church, granted, they, they have come under fire and are at threat of schism because, simply for allowing same-sex marriage. I, I've mentioned on here before, I follow a rather hunky and rather handsome Episcopal gay priest out of Canada. But, <laughs> I, you know, as far as I'm concerned, damage is done and there's nothing you can do to make it up for mm -hmm. me personally. Mm -hmm. You know, there was yeah. a day and age I would have loved yeah. to have been married the same way my parents got married in in a Catholic church. Mm -hmm. Those days are long gone. Yeah. You know, and I agree with you. I'm in the same boat as you. Um, I also was raised Roman Catholic. Oh I went gosh. to uh, Catholic too? high school. Yeah. 
But, and to your point, yeah, it's too late for us. The Catholic Church is not going to change in our lifetime. Right. But, presuming that the Catholic Church will endure for more centuries, I think that this lays the groundwork for maybe people, um, kids there are today, kids that are yet to be born may have it a little easier. And I think that's who's really going to reap the benefits from this. At it, least that's what is I Is there a benefit to it existing a couple hundred years? I'd prefer it just well, didn't even do that. I, like I said. And the world would be such a better place. Presuming <laughs> that it goes on, this is certainly. And that's just my opinion in Bob's theme. LGBTQ plus news is vital for our community and for the broader world as a whole. We have enough enemies at Fox News. Tucker, Sean, and Lara are loud. We need passionate allies. Happening Out Television Network, Queer News Tonight, and It's Happening Out are literally out of the closet and into the headlines. Our community needs your support. Like this broadcast and subscribe now to ensure the growth of the entire LGBTQ plus community.